move on to our next company, Six Sensor, Six Sensor Labs with NEMA. So if you're gluten sensitive, pay attention. You guys go ahead and uh, take it away. Great. Hi, my name is Shireen Yates. I'm the founder and CEO of Six Sensor Labs. And about 10 years ago, I got really sick. No one knew what was happening. A few years later, I got diagnosed with food allergies and sensitivities to gluten, dairy, egg, and soy. So mealtime suddenly became very, very stressful. A few years ago, I was at a wedding. I asked this waitress who brought by these delicious looking appetizers, is that gluten free? And she said, how allergic are you? And I was so tired of that question. I thought, what if I could actually just take a sample of this to know, to really empower myself with that knowledge and know what I'm eating. And that's what inspired Six Sensor Labs. At grad school at MIT, I met my co-founder, Scott. We had a shared uh, passion and, and bond of perpetual intestinal distress. And that's what inspired Six Sensor Labs. So we exist because food can be a threat. It can be a gamble. And, and uh, eating shouldn't be a gamble. But you, today, people have bad odds. They have bad odds because you don't really know what's in your food. From allergens or bacteria, there's hidden threats that could cause a stomach ache, a headache, or a hospital visit. And this affects one out of three people in the US every year. These people get sick from their food, whether you have food allergies or food sensitivities. And it's a growing issue. There's a 50% increase among people who have food allergies, in the, um, and those are kids in the US. And it's a growing concern not only for consumers, but food retailers. They're spending billions of dollars to make sure food is safe. And often it's not. Over 50% of food recalls are due to undeclared food allergies. So it's a big problem, it's a growing problem, and we need better data to know what's in our food. So that's why we designed the NEMA and started Six Sensor Labs, because we wanted to give that ability, that trust, that safety back into the hands of the consumer, let them test their food before they eat it, actually know that it's safe before they get sick. And so the way that we designed this was to be really simple, really fast uh, and discreet, and so uh, we want to run a, run a demo for you very quickly. So uh, I have some food here, uh, this delicious looking salad, uh, this wrap. They told me both of them were gluten free. I don't really know. Uh, I'm gonna load some of this, uh, the chicken with the salad dressing on there into the capsule um, and screw this on. I've already loaded up some of this, uh, this wrap here. So this, you just put it into the device, hit the button and we'll run both of these at the same time. And so now you can see that this is, this is processing. It's running the test on there. And uh, what, I can go, I go on that. <laughs> so what, what's happening inside of here is we actually have a mini chemistry lab uh, within each one of these capsules. So uh, within the capsule, there's a solution in there that we use to extract the gluten into solution. We break the chemical bonds between it and the rest of the food. Then we open valves so that we can move that solution to a test strip that we're using antibody-based technology. So the antibodies capture those gl gluten proteins. Uh, that causes a color change, and we can detect all of that within this device. So in reality, this is it's a complicated device. It's a lab test within this product, but it's very simple, very easy for a consumer to use. And it's a platform. Uh, so every uh, the way that we've designed the product is that uh, you can very quickly move to other allergens. So we already have peanut and dairy in development. All we need to do is basically change that chemistry that I described, the test strip and the solution, and that lets us very quickly move to other allergens. So um, it's really this full platform that enables us to go to uh, other products and then also work with food retailers, manufacturers in the future. And uh, this also has a big data aspect. So every test that's taken, uh, actually creates a data point. Did that, the resu result? Sorry. Yeah, so we, we have a result here. You can, you can see the, uh, the salad was gluten-free. The wrap, unfortunately, was not, so uh, I can't eat that wrap. <laughs> you just get a sad face or a smiley face there. Um, and every one of these data points is shared to our app so that we're then creating this new set of data that just doesn't exist now. So you can go and actually know what's safe to eat uh, before you get there. And so since Nima told me this is safe, I haven't had lunch yet, so I'm going to have a bite of this. <laughs> Life-changing. The two words that are repeated to us most by our users, because we're giving them back a lifestyle that was lost. We're giving them back the confidence of eating socially, eating out with friends, and having more data to know exactly what they're eating to be safe. We have over 20,000 people who've signed up for a community for Nima Gluten alone, and that's growing every day. 
So our go-to-market strategy, how are we going to get this product in the hands of millions? Um, we start direct-to-consumer first online, then scale through major retailers once we have a more robust product portfolio that includes the dairy and uh, peanut uh, sensors, and then finally distribute through doctor's offices, through the medical community. At that point of diagnosis today, people just say, good luck, you can't eat basically everything you're used to. So giving doctors better tools to help people navigate. Our price points are $249 for the sensor, that's a one-time price point, $399 per disposable pod, and we're uh, doing a subscription model, so people say they're going to use this in high-risk environments two to three times a week, usually when eating out, and a lot of our consumers say that there's, there's a lot of value in $399 for that peace of mind at mealtime. Our team of 17 is based out of San Francisco. They've not only designed, but also shipped high-volume consumer electronic products, as well as high-precision medical devices. So it's the perfect foundation to bring NEMA to life. So NEMA's truly transforming the way that we're all experiencing food, one bite at a time. So please pre-order today if you know people who have gluten sensitivities at nemasensor.com on pre-order today. Thank you. Yeah. That's a big deal. <laughs> Judges, what do we think? Yeah, pretty awesome. Um, just a few questions. So for an average user, um, how many, you know, to make it, because you said the sensing time is about two minutes. Yeah. So practically, how many, if you don't want to wait too long, let's say there's multiple dishes and food types on a given plate and you have multiple plates, or let's say you're doing a multi-course meal, um, how many sensors do you recommend that people have? From our user testing, we found that people are usually suspicious of, that, of one portion of that meal. So whether that's a sauce or a marinade or salad dressing, okay. we've seen that people typically want to test one thing in the course of a meal. Okay, so, so they're not like trying to test everything that... No, we haven't table. seen that. And if there are, they can put multiple samples in one pod off a plate. Um, okay. But if it's multiple entrees that they're suspicious of, they would use each pod per entree. Got it. And then another more practical question. So if you get a dish and a test positive, what do you... What do you do with it? Do you return it or ask? So I'll tell you what you don't do. You don't slam the dish in the waiter's face and say, no, there's gluten in here. Okay. That's what you don't do. What you do do is basically say, hey, I have the device. I've tested this. Um, and this is what I've been doing for the last three months carrying around the product. And I've found that uh, the wait staff restaurants are super, super accommodating. Um, and just grateful that, you know, they're not going to put something in front of you that makes you sick. So it's introducing the product. We have a lot of consumer education around that as well. It's one of our, the top questions that our consumers ask us. So do they just take the dish back? Take the dish back. And to, for me, I've never been charged. So that's, that's the experience I've had. Okay. And depending on the users that we talk to, yeah. some just, if something tests positive for gluten, they don't want to eat anything there at all. Other people have told us, oh, I'll just get another glass of wine then. Some people want a new meal. So it, it completely depends on the user. But uh, okay. we've seen that the restaurants are very open to it. Yeah. Okay. And last question. Um, you know, I don't know what your error rate is, but what's the liability and consequences of not getting it right? So we're building a brand around trust, and we have to deliver on our value proposition, which is for that sample of food with 99.5% accuracy, we can tell you whether or not there's a very trace amount of gluten in that sample. So we've been, we've been really focused on minimizing the false negatives in our development. Okay. Great. This is, this is really interesting in terms of the addressable market on this. It's, it's pretty huge. A couple of questions. One is for the users that are using this, what feedback have they been giving you and how have you taken that feedback to adjust either the product or the process? So we've been, uh, we're actually in the process of doing beta testing right now, so getting a lot of really great feedback in. Uh, some of the things that we are consistently hearing is just thank you, like this is life changing, this is bringing me peace of mind. So it's uh, really, I mean, great to hear that type of feedback. I'm getting text messages every day from our uh, beta testers. Other, I mean, small things that we've learned about the product are like people uh, might put food in, the uh, wrong amount of food in, or like they're very surprised at how little you actually have to put in. So some of those things that we're learning in beta testing is really valuable for us just to help us really find ways to very quickly educate our consumers about just how to properly use the test. But generally people are just genuinely really excited and happy that this is going to make a difference in their health and in, in their life. And I'll just add to that, is a piggyback off of James' comment, just manuals to help people with talking points. If they're in a restaurant, what do I do? And just giving yeah. material around that. And then finally, what are, what are the, what's your approach on where you're going to make money on this? Is it on the device itself, or is it this like the razor blade business in terms of 
the uh, the capsules themselves and, the, and what's the margins you're looking at? So really on both, um, the margins for both the sensor and the disposable pods today support our business model. We're always focused on making it as accessible to consumers as possible and focusing on bringing the design so it's sim super simple, um, can become a, this mass consumer product. Okay, thanks. So do customers need to know what to look for before they start using this? Like, it feels like that you have to know, hey, I'm, I want to avoid some ingredient or I've got an allergy, and this is a great device to test for it. But if I don't know, where do I start? That's a great question. Um, yes, for this current solution, you need to know what your triggers are when you're eating out. Um, but there is a big open question for people just not knowing how food affects them. Um, I think we're, we're having a lot of awareness and increased awareness there. Um, but the current solution, you have to know your trigger. Okay. Yeah. So you have to go to the doctor, understand that you're having a problem, get them to diagnose something, and then this is great for figuring out which ingredient is where. So y yes, um, okay. but half of our consumers and users actually have never go gone to the doctor. It's more with experimentation. I've cut gluten out, I feel better, and we're seeing a lot of that from our consumer base. So it's just okay. kind of experimentation. They know, they know, and then they, they want to avoid. Jenny, do you have some thoughts? Uh, how practical is this? I understand if you have a food allergy and you might die, but you think, like, if I'm at a business meeting, you know, at a nice restaurant, and, you know, I'm with, like, a client, am I going to be able to whip this out and put it in? What do you think? I have. I'm yeah. not biased at all. Um, so, and, and it's been, I just wonder how, I think it's awesome, and you yeah. guys did a great job you know, presenting. I'm just wondering, like, how the social stigma is kind of out there a little bit. And totally, so. totally. And that was um, actually part of the design, was giving people the option of discretion. So being able to, the triangle shape, you can run it on the table, or you can run it on the chair, you know, sort of between your legs, so it's sort of, you know, you have that option of running it under the table. And that was um, a, lot of, a lot of the direction that Scott took the product in. And we also have the smartphone app portion of it so that you can uh, either look at what has already been tested or um, you can just get that notification on your phone so that you don't have to keep the device on the table. But really what we're seeing a lot is, I mean, for people that have food allergies, if you eat something, or even just food sensitivities, like I have a bunch of food sensitivities, and if I eat something that uh, doesn't agree with me, that, that can take me out for half a day. It can take me out for a day. And so that like potential level of awkwardness at a table is well worth it to make sure that I'm going to stay healthy. And then I'm just wondering, can you guys... Super um, quick, Jenny. Go, oh, can you go into other areas, just like general nutrition? Because yes. I feel like that would be, you know, huge. Yes. And we, started, we wanted to start with a really, really visceral pain point and then go in that direction eventually. Watch out for the Internet of Food coming soon. <laughs> uh, big round of applause for Six Sensor Labs. Thank you. I did, in fact, drop one of your sensors and I can't find it, so... Bummer. Um, <laughs> yeah, here's another one that still has a sensor in it. Are the, the they're disposable? Yeah, it was already used. It's worthless now. Um, all right, it's going well. Um, our next company is going to come up on stage in just a second, but they need a moment to figure this out. Hey guys, don't talk amongst yourselves. I want to be a part of it. Mark, I want to be a part of this conversation. Are, are you talking about Google? You guys are negotiating up there, aren't you? Can we, can we talk about, like, do, do any of you on stage have any gluten sensitivity? Children with gluten sensitivity? No wonder you think there's social stigma. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking them in the meeting context. <laughs> I know, but, <laughs> like, should out. you be ashamed of the fact that I you are I'm allergic to gluten? That, no, not at all. Not at all. Jeez, I Jenny. <laughs> killing me. No, I'll tell you what I think is really awesome. I think that they should somehow get, um, you know, a crowd crowdsource model in here. And so as people go to restaurants, they can test food and basically have a database of, like, what restaurants are, are safe and what foods are safe at restaurants. And then I don't need to bring my device. I can just use an app that well, they will have tell that. me. That's not, re that's not really what the app was, I don't think. No, the, the app was exactly, well, they're not up here, but I know because I was in rehearsals with them. The app is to go to a restaurant, and as you test the food at a restaurant, it automatically is synced back with the app so other users can see it. What I think would be really cool is if it went into, like, Foursquare and Yelp and Google search results and had, like, a little NEMA. I just don't want to have to have the hardware. So I'm iterating. I can just have the software, we're good. Just the software. Well, you need the hardware with the software. You're the hardware girl. What are you talking about? I'm being so hard on you, Jenny. I'm sorry. Greg, what do you think? 
I think it's good. I think it's just tough because you really have to be looking for something and be motivated as a customer to go and test. Um, and I think if you do have a gluten allergy or some other sort of allergy, you're absolutely kind of motivated to go do it. But for a lot of people that either don't know um, or don't have a really severe allergy, I think it's going to be kind of tricky to um, convince people to go buy something, stick it into their food every time they're out at a restaurant. So. I agree. I think there's like the there are two schools of thought. There's like the people who are like, have like celiac disease and like it really is very serious and they will get sick for days or maybe have to go to the hospital. In which case, I mean, uh, Matt Burns is one of my editors and his little daughter has celiac and he had tears in his eyes yesterday during the rehearsal because that really could change a life. If it's a lifestyle choice, probably not going to whip out your you know, $200 device and starts, you know, testing for gluten. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, but even, even if you're on the light side of it, if you've experienced it, and I know family members of mine that, that have experienced it, it's, it's really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think the stigma piece of it, if you've experienced this, you don't really care too much about that. You just don't want to go through that. I think the thing that to me that's interesting around this is, you know, in the adoption of it, do you price down the hardware and then price up the cartridges a little bit so that you can get quicker adoption to it because yeah. that seems to be where you would get you know significant amount of margins and really be able to scale this up and make it a significant business like razor there. blades yeah cool james final thoughts yeah i think my I, I think it's looks like a pretty awesome technology product i think my main concern is just from a practical practical perspective not, not exactly in a stigma but um if if it's not a serious issue for me how likely am, am i to kind of go through the trouble of testing my food and then, you know, just practically, um, I don't know, I'd be kind of embarrassed or nervous to, like, send food back. Maybe it's you just and, me, but... <laughs> you and Jenny should go to dinner together. <laughs> um, all right, I we're think it's pretty interesting <laughs> for, like, serious conditions, so...